If you're using a software like MSI Afterburner and Hardware Info 64 in tandem with Rivetuner statistics overlay to monitor your hardware stats while you're gaming, you're most likely sacrificing performance in some instances as much as 50%. I wanted to show you guys the impacts of hardware monitoring and why it's crucial to be aware of the penalties as it also affects my work and the way I present you guys my benchmarks. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I wanted to make this video for you guys because on my channel, I make a lot of videos where I'm testing various games and doing benchmarks with different configurations of hardware so that you guys can make informed buying decisions or perhaps get a performance boost out of your current hardware. For the vast majority of the content I made where I'm showing you guys benchmarks, most of it consists of bar charts and that's mainly because it's the easiest way to present the final results to you guys and also if we're dealing with 20, 30, or even 40 game benchmarks, it's the most efficient way to go through all the games and show what has happened. Also, if it includes multiple configurations, it's easier to have all the sources of data in one graph rather than trying to fit a whole bunch of live demos on the screen at the same time. However, I know that a good chunk of my audience also likes to see real gameplay footage or side-by-side -side demos because it gives a more insightful look into how something performs and also serves as proof. Real side-by-side -side gameplay footage provides a more accurate representation of performance compared to bar charts by allowing viewers to see real-world differences in frame pacing, stuttering, and overall smoothness. While bar charts only display averages, gameplay footage visually reveals how performance fluctuates in different scenarios, making issues like 1% lows and frame drops more apparent. It also helps showcase the actual visual impacts of settings like, you know, DLSS, FSR, or ray tracing, which bar charts obviously fail to convey. Ultimately, this method does actually give a more relatable and intuitive experience, helping viewers to judge performance the way they would actually experience it in games. So I've started to include more and more of that recently with some of the videos I've done where I've tackled benchmarking hardware and testing out different configurations. If you guys saw my 9800X 3D versus 14900K versus 285K 40 game benchmark videos, I did include a segment where I showed some side-by-side -side gameplay footage of the 9800X 3D versus the 14900K as that was a matchup I know a lot of people were eager to see. This was pretty helpful because in some of those games we saw how even though the 9800X 3D was pushing a higher average FPS, the 14900K was matching it in the lows if not even beating it in some instances, so that perceived performance may not be as large as the average FPS implies. Well, that's great, isn't it? J the solution you're probably thinking about is just to try to show a real side-by-side -side footage wherever you can, but there is a glaring problem with this, and it's one of the reasons why I still lean more towards showing bar charts for performance in comparisons. You see, when I'm recording footage, I will use an overlay like Rivetuner Statistics to show stats like FPS, frame times, and hardware stats pertaining to the system components. This can include stuff like the GPU clock speed, GPU temperature, power, the CPU usage on a per thread basis, the CPU clocks, memory usage, and even more than that. These are all great stats to have access to because it really shows you how different games behave and interact with your hardware. Some games will show really high GPU usage and power drive others will show you how much they scale with multiple CPU cores and threads, and this helps you to get a better understanding of how performance differentiates between different games and hardware. The issue with this is that monitoring these stats it costs resources and it will affect your performance and depending on the nature of that particular sensor or stat, the degree to which it affects performance is going to vary. A couple of months ago, I made a video where I talked about how during my testing with the 9800X 3D, I ran into an issue with micro stuttering and that was severely hurting my frame times which can be reflected in the dips for the 1% and 0.1% low FPS. What caused this was the GPU power and power percentage monitor. MSI Afterburner and even Hardware Info 64 have a profiler panel that you can enable to see how long the execution time in milliseconds is for that particular sensor or stat. These particular values indicate that the time it takes 
MSI Afterburner to process and update each of those statistics, not the actual temperatures or the FPS values themselves. Higher values indicate that certain metrics require more system resources to pull frequently. If this panel shows very high values, it might indicate that pulling these stats too often is causing a performance overhead, which leads to the performance drops that we saw. If you want to learn more about this, you can actually go to the comment section of that video and I've left a pinned comment with some information about this given to me by the developer of Afterburner Unwinder. He's also added more in-depth information, so I highly recommend uh, giving that a read and I do appreciate him going there and uh, leaving that information and also replying to other users' questions. So circling back to the GPU and power percentage stat, so here we have my personal system and when I'm playing a game, I usually just have my FPS along with my GPU and CPU temp in the corner and that's it. I've turned off monitoring for everything else because you know I don't need them. I'm not showcasing any benchmarks on this system. I'm just playing the game for myself. So why waste resources monitoring them? But if we open up Afterburner, you guys can see for this demonstration, I have the profiler panel open. And if we go into the settings menu, then we can go into the monitoring tab to enable GPU power and power percentage. Just take a look at what happens. It looks like enabling GPU power percent and GPU power has significantly increased the execution time required to fetch those values. Like I was seeing values anywhere from like 10 milliseconds to 18 or if not higher than that for the power percent, which is really, really high. Hence, that is what was causing the severe performance drops in that previous video. You guys can also enable a profile time column in Hardware Info 64, which is basically showing you the same thing. And you'll notice how for GPU power monitoring, it is also showing you guys some really high profiling time compared to the other stats. Now, I just want to be clear, this is not a fault or limitation of MSI Afterburner or Hardware Info 64. This is just the nature of the sensors themselves. So some on-die sensors like CPU temperature, for example, will require very little execution time, whereas stuff like GPU power monitoring requires accessing other external components on the board. Hence, you see that requiring more milliseconds of CPU time per polling iteration. So here's the dilemma that I'm facing now. And to demonstrate what I mean, let's just hop on over to my test bench, which has a 9800X 3D and an RTX 4090. And I will be using Call of Duty Black Ops 6 as it's a game that has shown to be quite latency and resource sensitive when it comes to background monitoring. Also, all of the footage has been captured through an external capture card the Elgato 4K X. Yep, it was about time I finally got one for my setup, and this addresses the other problem where I would be experiencing another performance hit because I was recording locally on the system itself. And I do also have another video in the works where I discuss the benefits of the Elgato 4K X with benchmarks, so be on the lookout for that content piece. So as you guys can see, I have MSI Afterburner opened up, and we have the profiler panel open, and I'm monitoring a lot more here because it's a test bench, and and, you know, I want to show you guys as much information as possible during my benchmark tests. Right now, you'll see that most of the things that are being monitored have very low execution time, even lower than monitoring the FPS itself or the 0.1% or 1% low averages. So having them enabled wouldn't be detrimental to my overall performance, if at all. But as you guys know, I like to show a multitude of sensors and stats pertaining to the GPU and CPU so I can give you guys better insight as to what's going on. So I'll also be enabling those and we'll be doing some benchmark runs of Call of Duty Black Ops 6's built-in benchmark. And I want to show you guys the performance differences to really, you know, demonstrate what I mean here. And do note that this was tested at 1080p with basic quality settings. So on the left hand side, I have some limited stats. It's mostly just the FPS and the CPU stats. And on the right hand side, I have stats enabled from Afterburner, which pertain to the GPU. And as you guys can see, while our average FPS and 1% lows don't really change a whole lot, and are not severely impacted, our 0.1% lows sure do take a hit. It's not a huge hit, but it is certainly measurable. Also, if you're wondering what that red box is that says missing, it's from an asset loading bug, and you know that was introduced from this game's latest patch. This game and its passage sometimes really drive me up a wall because it seems like each patch can impact performance and then introduce a whole bunch of other bugs, but I digress. Now watch what happens when I introduce Hardware Info 64 into the mix, and I'll use this program to also pull some other data that MSI Afterburner doesn't natively support like GPU hotspot and memory junction temperatures and sometimes some other stats. But as you guys can see, while our average FPS and 1% lows aren't severely impacted, our 0.1% lows 
they are just absolutely decimated. We've lost like 100 FPS there, which is quite eye-opening to see. That is a huge performance difference. Now, to be fair, most people probably aren't running hardware info 64 or MSI Afterburner in the background and monitoring all these sensors, but for my channel, I wanted to show you guys this live side-by-side -side footage which you know will be helpful and I also want to be able to show you guys the best possible performance but it seems like I won't be able to do that at the same time without putting some sort of disclaimer there that you know there is a performance loss in these demos just for a sanity check you know I did also test another game and that was Black Myth Wukong with hardware info 64 also open at the same time at 1080p using high settings which you know this is a game that is a lot more GPU bound and you guys can see that, again, our average FPS and 1% lows don't really change a whole lot, if at all, but our 0.1% lows do decrease overall. It's not a severe hit like what we saw in Black Ops 6, but the hit is there nonetheless. So what this tells me is that, you know, scenarios where the GPU is the primary bottleneck, the performance loss isn't going to be as detrimental. So when I'm doing GPU testing at higher resolutions, say at 1440p or 4K, uh, the performance hit won't be as large. However, in CPU bound scenarios like 1080p or games where the CPU is the primary bottleneck, so Black Ops 6, you know, CS2, Baldur's Gate 3, these are some prime examples then you're going to get a performance hit and it's going to be more apparent and more profound. As an alternative, I did try to utilize NVIDIA's monitoring through the NVIDIA app overlay, as I've heard from some people that it has the lowest overhead and probably doesn't affect performance as much, and it may not be you know pretty or consistent looking, but hey, if it still allows me to show more data, I'm all for it. So I decided to also put that claim to the test, and once again, we're back in Black Ops 6, and, you know, what I noticed is that performance hit on our lows is about the same as when we had some of those GPU stats enabled in Afterburner without hardware info, but our average FPS took a bit of a hit there. So, unfortunately, this doesn't really seem like a viable alternative, and I did ensure that no instant replay or filters were enabled in the NVIDIA app or the overlay. With all that taken into consideration, this is where I'm at at a bit of an impasse because I'd like to show you guys some real gameplay footage or side-by-side -side demos, but then I'll always have this sort of thought in the back of my mind that I'm not showing you guys the absolute best performance because there is a bit of a performance penalty there. And I mean, I know side-by-side -side footage, how much more relatable it is, it gives you better insight and it kind of gives you that experience like I was saying before as if you know you were experiencing it for yourself. But, I mean, I can still show you guys some side-by-side -side gameplay, but it's going to be with very minimal and uh, stats, uh, pretty much nothing pertaining to the GPU. So that's why most of my videos that include benchmarking data are going to be mostly bar charts going forward. And I wouldn't have to worry about performance penalties there. It's easier to get through all the data as well, and I'll be able to fit more configurations at the same time. But obviously, if there's something crucial I want to show or display, or we're doing tests which involve, you know, maybe checking out something graphically, like, you know, DLSS demos and all that complex stuff, that's where the live demos really come into play. But for simple stuff like, is X GPU faster than Y GPU, I think doing bar charts is the most sufficient method in my opinion but you guys can let me know your thoughts below and for now that's going to be wrapping it up for this one and we'll be touching base in the next video if you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining then leave a like let me know your thoughts and comments down below be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel such as using my amazon affiliate link and if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.